Ladies and gentlemen, the Railroad Hour. And here comes our star-studded show train. Tonight, the Association of American Railroads brings you a new musical play by Lawrence and Lee, The Familiar Stranger, starring Gordon McRae and his charming guest, Dorothy Warren Show. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. Yes, tonight, another exciting musical first is brought to you by the American Railroads, the same railroads that bring you the food you eat, the clothes you wear, the fuel you burn, and the multitude of other things you use in your daily life. And now, here is our star, Gordon McRae. Thank you, Marvin. And good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Dorothy Warren Show will be Gene Myers in this week's musical adventure. And I'll be, well, you can call me the familiar stranger. Now I ask you, did you ever have an experience like this? You see a face in a summer night She smiles at you, her eyes are bright And though you've never met, you'll swear You saw that girl before somewhere Seen her before, don't know where Seen her before, don't know where Seen her before, don't know where Now what do you think of that? You see a girl on a crowded train You get a feeling you can't explain Your brain complains that it can't be true But you know her and she knows you Seen her before, don't know where Seen her before, don't know where Seen her before, don't know where Now what do you think of that? A nose, a mouth, and a pair of eyes can give a man a big surprise. You may not know the lady's name. You know you know her just the same. Seen her before, don't know where. Seen her before, don't know where. Seen her before, don't know where. Now what do you think of that? Obadiah. Hiya, Clint. Any mail for me today? Yeah, you must be joshing, Obadiah. Two mailbags full. Pardon I broke my back lugging them up in the depot. Well, I'm sorry I caused you so much trouble, Clint. Oh, uh, trouble to bubble, my grandpa used to say. <laughs> you know, we're all pretty excited about the big doings. Well, you know I'm getting excited about it myself. Say, Obadiah, did that young filly find you? Philly? Black-haired girl with shell rim spectacles and a cowhide briefcase. Granted, she might have took the wrong turning at the feed store. Now, Clint, you didn't give her directions how to get to my place here. Well, now, did I do wrong, Obadiah? Well, the main reason I come home here to Mercer's Gap, Clint, is to get away from all the people with the cowhide briefcases. They always want something. Oh, my jolly, I'm sorry. Oh, forget it, Clint. Makes no difference. Yes, well, I- I'll see you tomorrow, Obadiah. Sure, sure, sure thing, Clint. Hmm, black hair, horn rim spectacles, and a cowhide briefcase. Well, I ain't got nothing against black hair. Black, black, black is the color of my true love's hair. Her lips are something wondrous fair. The purest eyes and the daintiest Somewhere she stands I love my love And well she knows I love the grass On where she goes If she 
Very good. Very, very pretty. Huh? Has anyone ever told you that you have a very pleasant, untrained voice? Well, do you like it? Oh, indeed I do. I indicated that when I clapped my hands. When I do this, that means I liked what you did. Oh, I thought maybe your hands was cold or something. <laughs> oh, my, my, what an interesting reaction. I knew that I'd find some people in these mountains who were completely unspoiled and cut off from the taint of commercial civilization. Well, Mercer's Gap's off the beaten track, and no doubt about that. Now, let me see. Your name is Obadiah Flummery. That what the mailman told you? Yes, he sent me here. He said you were uh, the most musical person in Mercer's Gap. Now, look, what, what are you, miss? Oh, I am sorry. I'm Jean Myers from Middle Western University. I'm doing graduate work on American folk music, who trying to find the songs of the people in their native settings. Come on, fess up. This is a joke, a practical joke, isn't it? On the contrary, Mr. Flummery. I am approaching this research in a most serious and scholarly manner, and I expect you to cooperate in the same spirit. Well, what do I have to do to cooperate? You know, I have the oddest sensation. I, I know you're a total stranger, and yet you're... Well, you're familiar. Now, look, Professor, let's get down to business. What do you want me to do? Well, I'm trying to trace the source of a folk song that goes like this. Could it have originated in, in this locality? Soon home as straight as an arrow My yacht shoots along on the crest of the sea Soon home to sweet Maggie Darrow In her dear little home She is waiting song, all right, Miss Myers, and uh, you've got a right nice voice, but it's not authentic folk music. Well, how do you know? Oh, you can tell. Most music nowadays comes from fellas uh, sitting down at a piano and writing it out. But the real folk music is singing music first. Most times nobody even bothers to write it down. Well, here's the kind I mean. I'm just a Traveling through this world of war, but there's no sickness, toil, or danger in that bright world to which I go. I'm going there. Oh, and then no more. 
Flummery. Oh, you have a real talent. You think so? Do you know what I'm going to do? No, I can't imagine. I'm going to send back to Cincinnati for my little portable recording machine. And I'm going to make some records of your singing. Oh, but then I, I suppose you don't even know what records are. Why, well, those, uh, those hard little pancakes with the scratches on them. <laughs> oh, just to think. If it weren't for my happening to stop off in Mercer's Gap, nobody might have known about your talent. You're going to discover me. That's the idea, Miss Myers? On one condition, Mr. Flummery. You must always remain as primitive and as unspoiled as you are now. Cliff! Hey, Cliff! Why, Obadiah, what are you doing here at the post office? Look, look, that girl, black hair, horn rim glasses. Oh, dog, as I grant as I'm sorry about that, Obadiah. Sorry? She's wonderful. A real, honest, sweet, natural person. You gotta make me a promise, Glenn. How's that? On no condition is she to find out who I really am. Oh, my jolly, she won't get no secrets out of me. Good. Say, here she comes. I'm gonna duck out the back way. So, so, so long, Glenn. Hey, so long, Obadiah. Well, howdy, ma'am. Oh, Mr. Postmaster, I want this letter to go out as fast as possible to Cincinnati. Yes, ma'am. I'll see it gets on the 342 going west. Oh, thank you. You see, it's a request for my little recording machine. I'm going to make some records of Obadiah Flummery and bring his talent to the outside world. Oh, that will be nice. <laughs> you know, here I still have the strangest feeling about Obadiah. Seen him before, don't know where. Seen him before. In just a moment, we'll return with Act Two of The Familiar Stranger. Just this past weekend, most of us heard sounds like that, for football is just as much a part of American autumns as chill winds and falling leaves. And this year on gridirons throughout the country, wherever star 11s come together in a huddle, you might hear... Okay, team. The next play is old 29. Left end spreads wide. Snap the ball on four. Let's get on that line. One, two, three, four. Yes, in this exciting game of football, the success of a team frequently depends on the prompt and accurate understanding of the signals. And that's just as true in railroading, where another kind of signal calls the plays in moving a vast number of trains over our nationwide rail network. This week, hundreds of railroad signal officers who make up the signal section of the Association of American Railroads are meeting in St. Louis, Missouri. There they are exploring still better ways of clearing the way for the train traffic that makes up America's lifeblood. And on how well they do this depends much of the success of the railroad team in the highly competitive game of furnishing America with transportation service. That's true because railroad signaling or traffic control is indispensable in getting the most out of all the other facilities that make up a railroad. It's a key aid in assembling cars into trains and speeding them smoothly and safely through to myriad destinations. Indeed, without signals, a railroad would be similar to a busy street intersection without traffic lights. That's why better signals have been a main goal in the railroad's billion-dollar-a-year post-war improvement program. And expanded use of such marvelous devices as centralized traffic control, interlocking and automatic block signals, has in turn done much to increase railroad operating efficiency and safety to new high levels, and to produce more adequate transportation service for all of us. <laughs> Now here is Act Two of the new Lawrence and Lee play with music, The Familiar Stranger, starring Gordon McRae as Obadiah and Dorothy Warren Schultz as Jean, with Parley Bear as Clint the Mailman. As I was lumbering down the street, down the street, down the street, the pretty gal I had to meet, oh, she was fair to view. I stopped her and I had a talk, had a talk, had a talk, her foot covered up the whole sidewalk, oh, she was fair to view. 
Buffalo gals, won't you come out tonight? Come out tonight, come out tonight. Buffalo gals, won't you come out tonight and dance by the light of the moon? If you'd ask me to be your wife, be your wife, be your wife, we'd be so happy all the rest of our lives, when we would part no more. Oh, that surprises me, Mr. Flummery. I, I wouldn't expect you to know about buffalo girls in this part of the country. Well, the buffaloes died out, but those buffalo gals are still going strong. <laughs> you didn't tell me, Mr. Flummery. What do you do for a living? My father worked this farm for 40 years. And now you followed in his footsteps. I like to think of you singing your songs behind a plow. Well, you keep right on thinking of me that way. <laughs> <laughs> Say, how'd you like to meet another famous woman from folk music? Oh, I'd like that. What's her name? Nellie Bly, Nellie Bly, bring the broom along. We'll sweep the kitchen clean, my dear, and have a little song. Oak the wood, my lady love, and make the fire burn. And while I take the banjo down, just give the mush a turn. I, Nelly, oh, Nelly, listen up to me. I'll sing for you, play for you, a dulcet melody. Nelly Bly has a heart warm as a cup of tea And bigger than the sweet potato down in Tennessee Nelly Bly has a voice like a turtle dove I hear it in the meadow and I hear it in the grove I Nelly, oh Nelly, listen love to me I'll sing for you I had my little recording set here. How I'd like to make a record of that. Say, I, I've been singing to you about my favorite young ladies in folk music, but well, you must have a favorite or two. I do. Well, but she's not from this part of the country. They sang about her in the far west, in the Spanish days. Soft o'er the fountain, lingering falls the southern can meet a lot of pretty girls. Uh, uh, Mr. Flummery, uh, what songs do you know about famous men of folk music? There's hundreds of them. Did you ever meet this fella? Get out the way, old Dan Tucker, get out the way, old Dan Tucker, get out the way, old Dan Tucker, you're too late to come to supper. Town the other night, I heard the noise and saw the fight. The watchman was a running round, crying, Old Dan Tucker's come to town. So get out the way, Old Dan Tucker, get out the way, Old Dan Tucker, get out the way, Old Dan Tucker, you're too late to come to supper. Old Dan Tucker was a mighty man, he washed his face in a frying pan, combed his hair with a wagon wheel, and died with a toothache in his ear. Get out the way, old Dan Tucker, get out the way, old Dan Tucker, get out the way, old Dan Tucker, he's too late to come to supper. Yeah. That poor old 
old Dan Tucker must be a mighty hungry man by now. I hope somebody fixed him a midnight snack. <laughs> you know, when you sing about him, it seems like I really know him. Like he was right here with us. Well, that Dan Tucker wasn't so much. When you come right down to it, he was just a knockabout bum. But now I'll tell you about a man who was really a man. <laughs> man, John Henry was his name, and John Henry was a steel driver to Lord, Lord, John Henry was a steel driver to John Henry had a Talking about famous men in folk music, you can't forget how folks here about sing the praises of Mr. Ezekiel. No, sir. Ezekiel saw the wheel way up in the middle of the air. Ezekiel saw the wheel way in the middle of the air. And the little wheel run by faith, the big wheel run by the grace of God. It's wheel in the wheel, way in the middle of the air. Let me tell you what a hypocrite will do. Way in the middle of the air. He'll talk about me and he'll talk about you. You know, it's exciting. It's like a game looking for all the men in the folk songs. You know, I wonder if you're not looking for the wrong kind. How do you mean? Well, I was thinking you might get yourself interested in a, a flesh and blood man. Now, you take that Dan Tucker. He can't ever buy you a sarsaparilla at the ice cream parlor. You like sarsaparilla, Miss Myers? Well, I'd love to try it. Well, I'll take you out and buy you one right after the broadcast tonight. Broadcast? Oh, that is, uh, well, I mean, uh... Hey, now, Obadiah, what do you want we should do with all this here radio equipment? Oh, that nice mailman must have my little recorder. My goodness, they got it here fast. Come on in, Clint. Have the boys set it up in the spare room. All right, boys. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to put these microphones in the... Oh, don't get that wait fire a supply truck out the north there. Watch out for the amplifier. Oh, my... My little recording machine is only about the size of a typewriter case. Oh, it ain't no mistake, ma'am. Say, Obadiah, I can't have no peace in our house unless you autograph this here phonograph record for my niece, Nancy Jane. Well, I'm glad to do it, Clint. Let me use your pen. Autograph? Broadcast? There you are, Clint. Thank you kindly, Obadiah. Let me see that record. Sincerely yours, Davy Fields. That's who you are. You're Davy Fields. The famous picture star. Not to mention radio, television, and jukeboxes. Why, Obadiah's in every jukebox from here to the panhandle. You know, uh, those little scratchy pancakes. Oh. oh, you've been playing a joke on me. You're not Obadiah Flummery. That's my name. I hope to die. But now, who ever heard of a singing star with a name like that? 
So the record folks give me the name Davy Field. But you said you were just a farmer. No, ma'am. No, sir. I said this was my father's farm. Oh, don't you feel sort of lonesome here without all your swimming pools and your fancy cowboy suits? Well, no, Miss Myers. It's the first time in a long while that I, I hadn't been lonesome. I came back to spend a few weeks here in my hometown and see if I couldn't find what I've lost these past few years. You know, it's, it's lonesome to be famous. Oh, I don't feel sorry for you, Mr. Flummery, or Mr. Fields, or whatever your name is. I think I'll go if you don't mind. But I do mind. You're the first person in, well, I don't know how many years who's like me just for myself and for my music, not because I could do something for them. Besides, you've got to stay for my broadcast. Promised to buy your sastril afterwards, remember? Oh, my. Up to now, I, I thought all the fascinating men were in folk songs. Way, way back. Way back when? Folk music is now. It's you, and it's me, and every guy who meets a gal. And every song he, he sings to her. Black, black, black is the color of my true. Something wondrous there Show will be back in just a moment. Meanwhile, thanks to Polly Bear and the other members of our cast. The familiar stranger based on the famous folk music of America was an original story by Lawrence and Lee. The Railroad Hour is brought to you each week at this same time by the American Railroads. Marvin? When those who had daylight saving time during the summer turned back the clock an hour yesterday, we all returned to a uniform time in each of the time zones and thereby straightened out a lot of confusion that existed among communities. But this confusion was mild compared to that which existed in America 70 years ago, when there were almost as many different times as there were settlements. Finally, a group of railroad men, knowing what such confusion did to train schedules, got together and started the movement that led to standard time. So today we enjoy standard time, because far-sighted railroad men saw the need for it 70 years ago. Thank you, Marvin. Well, Dorothy, wasn't that fun singing folk music together? Oh, yes, but you got pretty familiar toward the end there, stranger. <laughs> so, what's on the show train next week, Gordon? Well, sir, for our fall season on the Railroad Hour, we planned a festival of the greatest songs and the greatest stories ever played on the American stage, starting with The Student Prince. And lovely Dorothy Kirsten will sing the sparkling role of Katie. Oh, I'll be listening, Gordon. Dorothy, before you go, I just want to tell you what a splendid job you've done this summer. It's been a real joy to share this microphone with you every Monday night. I'll tell you right now. Why, thanks, Gordon. It's been fun for me, too. Well, we'll, we'll all be seeing you again real soon. All aboard! Well, dear friends, it looks as though we're ready to pull out. And so until next Monday night, and Sigmund Romberg's the student prince, on behalf of the other members of the cast and of the American Railroads, this is Gordon McRae saying goodbye. <laughs> Gordon McRae can soon be seen in Three Sailors and a Girl in Technicolor. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. This is Marvin Miller saying goodbye until next week for the American Railroads. Now stay tuned for your Monday night of music on NBC. <laughs> Here, the voice of Firestones on NBC.